If you ever walked into a restaurant determined to eat healthy and moments later walked out having eaten exactly what you were trying to avoid? I know I have. Cheese fries, pasta, how did that just happen? I can't believe I just did that. Frustration sits in, sometimes guilt, that terrible feeling of failure. What if I told you that what you eat is not actually an active or even conscious choice. As a matter of fact, what we eat is really a series of unfortunate or fortunate events. Genes, environments, emotions, hormones, and macromolecules colliding together at the right or wrong time, in the right or wrong place, and boom, appetite. You eat and stop, or you eat and eat and eat. Hi, I'm an internal medicine physician, and I'm also boarded in obesity medicine. And I believe that physicians in society underestimate the power of the gut and the brain. We like to think that people with obesity have weak willpower, that it's their fault rather than a deficiency in hunger and satiety hormones. I know because I used to be that judgmental physician until I walked into a health check three years ago and found out that my bad cholesterol of 170, my BMI was 31. Whoa, I was obese and I'm pre-diabetic? How did that happen? I'm supposed to treat this. All of a sudden, I was my patients, and they were me. And just like them, I blame myself for not being able to resist that croissant at Starbucks. Gosh, I would eat good all day long, and that croissant kept calling me over to the dark side. It wasn't until I figured out that my food choices, my food choices were more of a product of what was going on uh, going on around me rather than within me, rather than a deficiency of me, of my character, that I was finally able to lose weight, but more importantly, learned how to chronically manage weight. And I went on to build a new clinical model to do just that. And today, I want to talk to you about a tool I use with all my patients. You guys know it well, the scale. And this is the best tool I have, and sometimes it's my worst enemy. It's the best tool because long-term studies show that the best way you can get your weight off and keep it off is by stepping on this daily. But my obstacle is, is I have to convince my patients who have lost weight and reversed their chronic disease and feel good to continue to step on this. See, anyone can lose weight, but maintaining weight loss is elusive. Research shows that when we lose weight, our brain and our gut alter hormones and peptides that encourage us to regain that weight. And these metabolic adaptations, they don't last for six months, they last for four to five years. We like to think that we're in control that the reason we revert back to old habits is because I don't have time, I got busy, I'm lazy, I have no willpower. But the reality is, is we're pulled back to those habits. I like to tell my patients that losing weight is a fun project, but keeping your weight off is a part-time job till death do you part. It's hard, sometimes frustrating, and it's a long-term commitment. And this scale can be your best friend. Stepping on it daily allows you to formulate a mental dashboard that can help you fight that biological drive to regain weight. It's a compass. Without it, your appetite hormones are going to lead you south. Well, actually, in this case, north. Imagine that you're in a car race, and your goal is to get to the finish line of health. It doesn't matter how fast or slow you get there but you want to get there and stay there because that's where you feel good. People with obesity have a smaller gas tank. They can reach that finish line, 
But in order to do so, they need to have the perfect race. No mistakes. The wind, the road conditions, the tires on your car, the fuel you put in your car, the speed you go out will all determine how far you can take that smaller tank. And that is how our environment, our emotions, what we eat, how much we sleep, our genes, our microbiomes impact and alter our appetite hormones. But we choose to ignore these. Rather, we want to put our fate in the driver. And we race, and we race, and we race. And we fail, and we fail, and we fail. And rather than go back and take a look at that small tank of gas and say, how can we expand it? Or take a look at the conditions and say, how can we optimize them to get the most out of that tank? We turn around and we blame the driver, me, you. And that's how the scale becomes my worst enemy. Look at that. I gained two pounds. I can't believe I binged on Nutella while preparing for this TEDx talk. <laughs> I'm a failure. I'm pathetic. I can't control myself. I'm fat. I'm lazy. This type of self-stigmatization and self-blame will make you sick. A recent study showed that people who internalize weight stigma are three to six, three to six more times likely than pe to have metabolic syndrome, which, is a, which basically leads to heart and diabetes, heart disease and diabetes, than people who do not have that stigma. And I believe it because I see it every day. Negative thinking will blind you from seeing the conditions working against you and prevent you from seeking treatment and seeing alternative explanations. Let's try this again. Look at that. I gained two pounds. My mental dashboard goes up. You know, my appetite must be up because I've been working late at night. I better start sleeping a little bit more and catch up on some sleep. Or if I have to work up late at night, I better make sure there's no Nutella around. See, the problem is not the skill. The problem is the stigma we as a society place on people who are overweight or who struggle with obesity with this misconception that weight somehow represents our character. It does not. Let's stop judging ourselves and others by their weight. Weight is a number. We can track it. It's something that we can perhaps remind us, be insightful, but it does not tell you the whole story or even a part of the story. It definitely does not tell you how brilliant, wonderful, and an accomplished person you are. When people ask me, hey, what do you guys, what are, what do, you guys do at Anara Health that's so unique? I tell them, we help people manage their weight. But more importantly than that, we help people see past their weight. Thank you.